I feel like I've done quite a few videos recently on luxury pieces that I'm no longer buying and items I wouldn't suggest that you spend your hard-earned money on, but not for a second do I want to make you think that I am no longer buying luxury full stop. As much as I wish that was the case, it isn't. So today's video is going to be all about enabling. We're going to be discussing the luxury pieces that I will continue to invest in because I really feel that these are the kind of things that I am getting my money's worth out of, which is my goal at the end of the day. I really don't mind spending money on luxury because they do bring me joy, these purchases, but I want to make sure that the pieces that I invest in, I can actually put to use. So without further ado, if you'd like to see my list of luxury pieces that I will unbox time and time again, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and keep on watching. If you discovered me in the past two years, I want to say, you have definitely heard me talk about my aspiration to become a more conscious luxury consumer, which is something that I am really proud of. I feel like I have caught back quite well on how much I buy and what I buy, two things that have been incredibly helpful. The first one is wishlisting, which is something that I have done dedicated videos on. If you have not seen those, I will make sure to have one linked up here, my latest one, where I discuss not only my wishlisting experience and my process, but why I find it incredibly helpful. And then another thing that I have started doing more recently is this idea that anytime I want to buy a luxury piece, something that's not a necessity, and it can be something as little as a hundred dollar purchase or something as large as, you know, three, four, five, six, seven thousand dollar purchase, whatever it is, anything that I'm buying just because I want to and not because I need to, I will try to commit to setting an identical amount of money aside into my savings. So let's say if I buy something that's a thousand dollars, I will make sure to set a thousand dollars aside and put that into my savings account, which I feel like will definitely make you reconsider more frivolous luxury purchases because at the end of the day you're not only spending a thousand dollars but you're spending two thousand so the steps that you go through to make that purchase decision are going to be a little bit more involved and you will definitely be a little bit more i feel thoughtful with what you spend your money on because you're spending doubles now obviously you're not going out there and spending that two thousand dollars half of that is going into a savings account but it kind of feels like you're paying the bill twice. So if you're someone who sometimes struggles to make more financially responsible decisions, this is something I would highly encourage you to try. And obviously the more expensive the piece is that you're buying, the more difficult it's going to be, I assume for most people to set the same amount of money aside. So you can always play around with the ratio. If you're buying something that's more expensive, you can try to put 50% of the money aside or 60%. It all depends on your circumstances and what you are able to do. But let me tell you, having this strategy is something that has put me off of buying a lot of more random impulse things that I did not really need. And I have found it incredibly helpful. I'll definitely come back to you at the end of the year and tell you how I did using this little tactic and whether or not it's something that I was able to keep up with. But for now, I'm fully committing to doing this. And whatever I share with you in today's video, whenever I'm buying any one of these pieces, I will commit to putting money into my savings account. But without further ado, let's get into talking about the pieces that I will continue to buy really quite happily. And I do apologize if the lighting is crazy again in today's video, but I'm filming early in the morning and the sun keeps appearing and disappearing behind the clouds. So bear with me. I hope the lighting isn't going to be too, too distracting. But without further ado, let's get into talking about some of my favorite luxury pieces to buy. And the first one, I don't know if it's going to be off brand. It's definitely not off brand for me because these are the kind of things that I live in, but I have not really talked about them on YouTube, which is high-end activewear. Now here, I'm not necessarily talking about luxury activewear, so leisure wear from brands like Hermes or Chanel, because I really don't think that they are the best at doing activewear. I have bought a handful of commercial pieces from Hermes. I even have a sweat set from them and I really don't think it's worth the money. The materials, the cuts, the fits 
are just really not where they should be. I think you can get much more flattering pieces from brands like Lululemon, Elo. Who else do I really enjoy? I love Skims Activewear and Leisure Wear, and I have been toying with the idea of doing sort of a comparison video on some of my favorite, really popular high-end activewear lines. I understand that they are not luxury, so they are not what you're used to seeing from me, but they are not inexpensive by any means, especially if you compare them to brands like H&M or Zara. So if it's something that you would be open to seeing from me, let me know in the comment section. It's something that I am really quite informed on at this point because I pretty much live in activewear. When I'm not here filming for you guys, I pretty much live in my shorts and my tanks. I have them from every single high-end activewear line that most of us are familiar with. Although there are quite a few newer up and coming brands, which I'm really excited to discover and play around with. But as I said, my favorites are Lululemon. I think Lulu's quality is just the best of the best. I have tried many other brands, but Lulu is the brand that I always come back to. I do like some of Elo's fits. And then my skim stanks are really just spectacular. I'm not sure if you have tried skims, but I have been really impressed by the quality of their things. And I really think the key to active wear is washing your things on a gentle cycle, because these are things that you have to wash on a very regular basis, but not putting them in the dryer. I think if you air dry your active wear, they will last a lot longer. Anyway, I digress. Activewear is something that I live in. I wear them to the gym. I wear them whenever I go out with friends because honestly, <laughs> at this point, if my friends want to see me, they have to do a workout with me. I wear them with Pi because they are easy. I don't have to worry about them too much. And I have really found some really flattering shapes that I don't feel embarrassed going out in. So Activewear is something that I will continue to spend money on because it's something that I know I'm going to wear, use, and having my rotation constantly in the same vein. Something that I also gladly spend my money on is more luxurious home pieces. And here I'm not necessarily talking about designer furniture or designer tableware, even though those are things that I really enjoy too, but more luxurious upgrades on necessities. So things like designer slippers, designer hand soap, designer candles. You guys know that scented candles are kind of my love language. Those are things that I will always have at home. And I have dabbled in buying less expensive, less luxurious candles, but I always come back to some of my favorites. So I do love Fine Scents Mayfair Affair, which I have burning behind me. I do love my Diptyque candles. Santa, Nargile, and Bay are some of my favorite scents. I do like a couple of scents from Jo Malone. I do love my incense. I really enjoy Aesop incense. And speaking of Aesop, you know that I love their hand soap. They, they are something that I have been talking about for a really long time, not that they need my praise because they are extremely well known. So these are things that I will continue to spend money on because I think they just infuse my life with little seconds of joy. Like anytime I go to wash my hands, which is something that we do all day, every day, it's something that will just make me feel a little better. Even if it's just for a single second, it helps to ground me and it helps me to be in the moment. So it's definitely something that I really happily spend my money on. I know, and I know it's not a necessity. You can buy soaps for a lot less money, but if it's something that you feel would bring you a little bit of joy, why not? And it's something that I actually thought about in my last video. I talked about a pair of slip-ons from the row. If you have not seen my last video, it was on some of the latest luxury launches. And I talked about a new pair of slip-ons from the row, which are called the Hugo Slides. They're kind of the Rose take on the Birkenstock. I think they're called the Boston Slippers, which I said that I'm not really sure if it's something that I would be able to pull off wearing them out and about. But one of you said in the comment section that why not just buy them for the home? And I thought to myself, yeah, you're actually so right. Because in the past, I had no issue spending a little bit more money on designer slippers. I have bought slippers from Dior, Tom Brown, even Versace, believe it or not. And I feel like I stopped doing that when I got pie just because 
everything that I own these days is covered in his hair. So, and that's the reason why I love activewear because they're so easy to wash and clean and I don't have to worry about them. But if you're going to wear them at home, especially if you spend a lot of time at home, if you work from home maybe, or if you're a stay at home mom or dad, those are the kind of things that you will genuinely use. And if you are trying to be a more conscious consumer, why not spend money on things that you will be able to use all day, every day. So I would definitely say designer hand soaps, designer candles, designer homeware. So things like slippers, even designer sheets and designer bedding. Those are the kind of things that I will definitely continue to enjoy and buy on a regular basis. If you spend a lot of time on luxury social media, it's not going to come as a shock that for the past few years, the smaller the bag has been, the more hype it has received. And yes, larger bags are coming back into trend and we are seeing more and more of them on the runway and brands are producing more and more larger totes and larger bags. But at the end of the day, trends really don't matter if you're not going to be able to integrate them into your everyday life unless you are a trend chaser and a trend dresser, which there's nothing wrong with. There is no judgment here. But personally, if it's not something as trendy as it is and as hyped and as many compliments as it gets, if it's not something that I enjoy using and I'm able to use on a regular basis, again, it's not something that I personally I can justify spending my hard earned money on. So something that I will continue to buy because those are the kind of things that I am really able to use are larger totes. Now something that has been back in my life for about a month or so is this pack, which is the Chanel, is it called the Chanel 19 or the 22? I'm blanking on it. Anyway, I do have an entire dedicated deep dive on this bag, which I stand by everything that I said in that original review. But one thing that I would encourage you or something that I have come to realize is that I would not buy this in the larger size because it is really quite large. And when it comes to you carrying such a large bag, it's not something that you will carry completely empty. But when you put something heavy in there, as you fill this up, it's a really, really lightweight bag, but once you start putting things in here, it will become heavier and heavier. And as that happens, the bag starts sagging and the chain actually becomes longer, which means that this bag hangs really quite low, which is what I think can give this bag sometimes that trash bag kind of look. So if you're going to get this bag, even if you enjoy a large and in charge oversized bag, I would steer you in the direction of getting this bag in the medium size. Obviously they offer this in several sizes at this point, but I do think after using this bag several times for a couple of months, obviously when I first reviewed this, I had this and now I've had this back in my life for about a month. I have been using it again and I can tell you that I would not suggest buying it in the larger size. Stick to the medium one because this one is just too big. And when it comes to the overall user experience, I think it will not look quite as refined as it would if you just stuck to the original medium size. Anyway, large totes are something that I am really enjoying. Those are the kind of bags that I really reach for these days. And especially totes that are easy, hassle-free, not overly branded, not in your face, not loud, but things that I can really use. So a couple of things that I have on my wish list, or more like my radar, I should say, are the Loewe foldable puzzle tote, which at this point they offer in a ton of different sizes. I'm kind of drawn to the large size in that bag. And for this current season, they're also doing it in an extra large size, which can go one or two ways. I think it can either look really chic or it can look like an Ikea plastic bag that you're carrying around. I have not had a chance to try it, but it's something that I am really tempted by. And at first, when I first saw that bag come out, I wasn't sure how to feel about it. If you're not familiar with the bag, it is made of these different panels of really soft leather, which is why you're actually able to fold the bag flat, which is a cool idea. I'm not sure how much you would actually take advantage of that feature, but I get the idea. It's cute, I guess, when it comes to storing the bag or traveling with it. It's good to know, but I don't think I would be folding that toad, especially because you do get a crease line running down the center of the bag if you fold it, which is not something that I would personally appreciate. 
it doesn't matter how many beautiful pairs of loafers or boots I buy, the shoes that I come back to time and time again are white sneakers. And that is purely because I wear so much black that I really feel that wearing a white pair of sneakers or even a pair of sneakers that just feature a white sole really help to break up my outfit and lift me instead of anchoring me down. So white sneakers are definitely something that you will see me unbox. Now, if you've been with me for a couple of years, you know that my favorite white sneakers for the past couple of years have been the Celine. I think they're called the CT04 sneakers, but there really isn't a single pair of sneakers from Celine that I would not be happy with. Prior to that, I was obsessed with the Avanta sneakers. And before that, I went through a phase of buying and collecting white Chanel sneakers, which I really want to do at this point, just because I think Chanel's pricing for their sneakers and really for everything across the board is just outrageous. I went to try on a pair of sneakers at Chanel. I think this was towards the end of last year. And I looked at the price tag and I think they were like 14, 1500 euros, which is just an insane amount of money to spend on a pair of sneakers. Trust me, I know that even spending a thousand is a lot of money and it's ridiculous, but that's still something I feel like under and around a thousand dollars, I'm fine. But above that, to me, it is just too much money to spend unless they have a really unique design element. Maybe if they feature a little bit of exotic skin, but even then I would not want to spend that much money, especially considering how delicate exotic skins are. So Chanel sneakers are definitely not something that I will continue to buy, but my Celine sneakers, if Hermes came out with the Avantage again, they are definitely something that I would consider reinvesting in. Now, a pair that I haven't actually tried yet, they are nothing new if you have been into Loewe for a while, they are definitely something that you have tried, but Loewe has a really classic, iconic pair of sneakers, which they do in a ton of different colorways every single season, and they have been doing them for years. So again, it's not going to come as a surprise if you're a luxury lover, but I haven't actually tried Loewe sneakers, but it's something that I want to get into. I don't know if I'm going through a Loewe phase right now, but most things that I'm seeing that I'm tempted by are actually from Loewe. So the puzzle foldable bag, the leather t-shirt that I showed you in my last video, and then these sneakers are also on my wish list slash radar from Loewe. And they do these sneakers in a ton of different colors, including white. But I think most of these shoes actually come with a more natural rubber sole. So I'm not sure how I would feel about that. Anyway, long story short, I'm curious to try these, but white sneakers are definitely something that are not going anywhere from my collection. And you'll probably see me unbox plenty of those in the coming year. I can't remember exactly how long it's been, but I did at one point ban myself from buying any more designer rings because you know how much I love my luxury rings, but I think I'm ready to get back into exploring what's out there because I did a live this past weekend with Amy and Kat, which if you came to that live, I so appreciate you. If you have not seen that, it was recorded. It was a YouTube live, but you can still find it on Amy's channel. And we talked all about Hermes Fine Jewelry, our experience with the brand's fine jewelry, and we also discussed the special order experience. It was an over two hour conversation. So if you want to put it on almost as a podcast and just listen to it in the background while you're cleaning or while you're doing your daily chores and errands, I would highly suggest giving it a listen. And if you showed up, I really appreciate you. And Amy and Kat, if you're watching this, thank you so much for having me. Anyway, that video will be linked down below for you. And since we were talking all about Hermes Fine Jewelry and I took a lot of my jewelry out from my safe to deposit box, I came to rediscover my appreciation for rings. So I do think that I'm ready to start dabbling in rings again, because the reason I came off of buying rings is because I wanted to diversify my fine jewelry collection. I felt like I had so many rings, but I didn't have any necklaces. I only had a handful of bracelets, which there was a reason for it. And even though I was able to buy a necklace and one or two pieces of other jewelry, so I did buy a bracelet and I can't remember if I bought anything else. I did try and played around with some other pieces. Rings are what I come back to time and time again. So rings, I could see 
perhaps a new ring in my future. There isn't one that I'm really tempted by. And I thought that my next fine jewelry purchase was going to be a bracelet. But the more I think about it, the more I realize that I would be better off buying another ring just because it's something that I feel I would get a lot more wear out of. So I'll keep you posted. There isn't a specific design on my radar just yet, but rings, you know, are the kind of things that I wear over and over again. They are the thing that I always come back to. So I'll definitely keep you posted on what rings I am looking at. Maybe we should do a video on some great pieces of fine jewelry out there, maybe some new releases and new launches for 2024. If that's something that you'd like me to do a roundup on, let me know in the comment section and I would be happy to do that for you and for us, frankly. But my friends, the big question is what are the luxury pieces that you enjoy spending your hard earned money on? What are the things that you continue spending money on time and time again because you feel that you can really put them to use. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts in the comment section. I always love learning from you. And while you're down there, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I really appreciate you being here and watching and I will see you back here with a new video really, really soon.